So the main topic of this surah, and it's very important that we, we, we reflect on, and you understand what is the main theme or what is the main topic of the surah, and that helps you when you go into contemplating the Deborah, because then you, you're able to abstract these benefits. So if you just go, I'm going to go through it quickly just as an introduction to what we're coming to these verses. If you look back, you know, one of the main topic or the main theme is, you know, how to give the different ways to give da'wah, or different, you know, how to give da'wah in different means and different ways, you know, and, and to not give up, to work hard in da'wah. That, that's, so that's the main theme. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to our next episode of Quranic Transformation with Muslim Mastery. And you see it, we have our dear beloved Shaykh, Shaykh Abdurrahim Makarti. So Jazakumullah khair Shaykh for joining us. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for inviting me. And mashallah Shaykh, for those of you who know and I hope everyone is aware, Shaykh has been in the da'wah field for uh, several decades, I think at least two decades now, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Sheikh, would like to uh, just introduce a bit about uh, to the audience about your current projects, where people can find them, uh, what are your current uh, platforms that you're involved with, and uh, that would be a good introduction for those who don't know about your work. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulillah. Alhamdulillah, my main focus now is on uh, da'wah and you know, da'wah meaning to non-Muslims and to the, taking care of new Muslims along with the issue of uh, tafsir and tadabur, which we're doing today. This is what sure. all my focus has really and it come uh, come to, alhamdulillah. And also I have an, a, another project which I'm working on, which I'm, I've delayed some time, but it's going to be, you know, the, the basic fundamentals of ilm and knowledge that every Muslim needs. You're making knowledge easy and accessible for the people, inshallah. It's something I've been working on for a long time. It's a bit on hold now, but inshallah, soon, inshallah, we, that will be out as well. And um, I'm working with, with, with several different organizations. We have our own organization in, in Istanbul called Sahaba Academy, which is uh, for, for you know, training du'at. Uh, and then I'm also with the brothers in Aira, working with them in some projects. As soon as we're going to Africa with them and some other countries, we're working with them in uh, the projects in South America as well uh, and around the world. And also with, with one Ummah charity, uh, we have a lot of projects with them. And one of the projects we're really going to be working on with them is also you know, taking care of new Muslims is, and is one of the things I'm, I'm really into. Uh, not, not just to have someone take the shahada and then the Allahu Akbar, and then what do you do after that? So alhamdulillah, the program is now working on how to take care of them, you know, spiritually. But also I know a lot of them from, you know, different poor villages. They need also, you know, uh, assistance as well. So we're helping them with that, inshallah. So those are some of the projects that I'm focusing on with our teams from, from those organizations, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, but beautiful. Yes, and Sheikh, yes, uh, as you know, that the new Muslim development work is very dear to my heart as well, because that's one of the things I've seen that we we we, we throw a towel very quickly. It's shahada khalas, it's a win, and and we just uh, forget about the next steps and think that you know they're good to go. So, alhamdulillah, it's really good to hear. Uh, so, yep, so as we were discussing offline, Sheikh, so the ideas of these um, sessions is to uh, share some of the tadabur, some of the action items, some of the ways that people can think uh, differently, work on their heart, and work on their actions while being guided and empowered from Quran. And so that's the idea. We just go like pretty freestyle. It's not like an academic or we're talking about the tafsir and what have you. So that's the idea. And I think before we jump into it, um, so we have shared earlier some of the questions that we, we suggest people ask themselves, right? So some of the things would be like, when you look at the words, what does it tell me about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there a promise of Allah from this verse? What kind of people and qualities is the verse talking about and so on and so forth? So I think before we jump into it, I wanted to see if you can shed some light when you are thinking about uh, uh, the verse is, if, if there are any triggering questions that you would suggest the audience to think about as they're trying to reflect on the verses. Um, no. Yes, I mean, you guys reached in your last session in Surah Nuh, to verse uh, 13. And um, when you reflect on these verses, any, you want to start reflecting them now, or you, you said you want no, to recite so them I, first? I, I want to see, like, yeah, if, if you have any sort of a... Uh, any sort of guidance, like in terms of one or two or three questions that people can think about as they are. So let's say someone is opening and reading the translation just by themselves. Uh, would you recommend any questions or any way for them to think about? 
That, that's a good question, Annie. And, and that's one of the things I was going to mention here in these ayat that we're about to reflect okay, on. Okay, so we'll see that. Sort of new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, inshallah, I'm going to bring it up on the screen. So, if you can, uh, we'll, we'll be covering 13 to 20 of Surah Nuh in this episode. So, if you can, inshallah, recite this for us, that would be beautiful. Yes, whenever you're ready, Sheikh. You put it on the screen or not yet? Yes, yeah, yeah. I have it on the screen. Yes. So I will, I'll, I'll do the screen adjustment. Inshallah, you can go ahead. Okay, this one. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا وقد خلقكم أطوارا ألم تروا كيف خلق الله سبع سماوات طباقا وجعل القمر فيهن نورا وجعل الشمس سراجا والله أنبتكم من الأرض نباتا ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم إخراجا والله جعل لكم الأرض بساطا لتسلكوا منها سبلا فجاجا جزاكم الله خير شيخ so let's uh, let's talk about when you when you are thinking about it like what comes to your mind uh... obviously when you reflect on these verses you know it, it's you have to go back a couple of verses honestly because th these verses here obviously the, the main objective or the main theme of these verses is for us to reflect and to contemplate on Allah's creation in the universe and he's going to mention different examples in these ayat. But if you just go back a couple of ayat and reflect uh, on the meanings, because what came in the beginning, and the, the surah of Nuh, he's considered the you know the second father to mankind mm -hmm. from the prophets, and he's the first you know prophet sent to mankind because the first shirk that was done upon the earth was done during his time, alayhi salam. So the main topic of this surah. And it's very important that we, we, we reflect on, and you, you understand what is the main theme or what is the main topic of the surah. And that helps you when you go into contemplating the Deborah, because then you, you're able to abstract these benefits. So if you just go, I'm going to go through it quickly, just as an introduction to what we're coming to these verses. If you look back, you know, one of the main topic or the main theme is, you know, how to give the different ways to give da'wah, or different, you know, how to give da'wah in different means and different ways, you know, and, and to not give up, to work hard and down. That, that's so. That's the main theme. So, if you look, for example, in the beginning, verse number three, what did he call to Alayhi Salam? It shows he's calling to Tawheed. Verse four, he comes with a different style, which is to use Tarheeb and Tarheeb, or to to encourage them and to warn them. And then, uh, you know, verse number five, that giving Dawah at all times. You know, verses uh, uh, talking about giving Dawah in, in the, the Layl and Nahar at the time, the day and the night, right? And here is very important because we always talk about with the brothers, and we had the you know you know here in Qatar with the World Cup, uh, the brothers who came from around the world, and you know talking about days off and time off and all of this stuff. We we don't know anything about this when it comes to we look at our elders and how they would give dawa. It's a twenty four seven. So if we find a dawa opportunity at nighttime, we're giving dawa at night. If it's in the daytime, in the daytime. If it's after fajr, it's after fajr. So and you, and that's kind of what you benefit from this these ayat as well. Uh, in, in verse number five, and then in verses eight and nine, the, uh, how he would give dawah individually, and how he would give dawah then to groups as well, uh, and then the verses ten to twelve come. That's like an introduction for what we have here in verse thirteen and onwards, when he calls them to make uh, istighfar, when he calls them to make istighfar and to repent to their Lord, and that which will come from it. And here is a very interesting story about these ayat, verses ten to twelve. Um, and Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, different people came to him. And, you know, students, that's the important thing about students is they, uh, a lot of times you'll find some students who are, you know, they, they are the ones who are, uh, they just kind of take from their shaykh or from their teacher without asking why. But one of his students here, you're going to see, he's, he's contemplating on you know, different people coming and asking different questions. What is the answer going to be from the imam? And this is, you know, this is why we benefit from the story, but the fact that this student is going to ask that question. 
So the first man came to him and complained about drought. And he said, no, what should I do? He said, he said pray for Allah for forgiveness and make it step fun. A second person came and complained about poverty. He, he gave him the same answer. You know, make dua to Allah to forgive you, make it step fun. The third person said, can you pray to Allah and ask him to bless you with a child? So he gave him the same answer, which is to make a lot of his fun. The fourth person came and he complained about the dryness in his garden. It's similar to a drought as well. But he gave him the same answer, which is what? To make a lot of istighfar. Uh, th so now the student is asking. Four people came with four different scenarios, four different problems. And he said, all of them, you gave them the same answer. So why is that? So right away, Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, he said, I didn't say it. It's not from me. He said, haven't you heard what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Nuh? فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدَكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ الْغَارًا And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, seek the forgiveness of your Lord, uh, He is the غفار, the all-forgiving subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He will send down from you when you do that rain from the skies, continuing showers, midrara, and He will give you an increase in your wealth and children, He will provide from you jannat and anhar, meaning uh, the Jannat in Anhara, the gardens and the rivers as well. So these are you know, the things that come from that. And the same thing was done by Umar al-Khattab as well when they had a drought and they asked him to make istisqa. And as he was making istisqa, you know, giving the khutbah, and he, he mentioned that uh, all he made was istighfar. And the people said, we don't see that you made istisqa. All you've done is said istighfar. And he said, I've asked from Allah what you with that which is so powerful that he will send down, you know, the rain from the sky, or as he said, uh, Allah And a similar story happened to Anas, and then he, he read the same verses after that, at, uh, from Surah Al-Nuh, verses 10 to 12. Similar, the Sahabi Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu an, when uh, he learned about um, what had happened to one of his farms, that where it become it had become very, very dry, and uh, the, 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 the plants were dying inside, and what have you, and when he realized this, he went and he prayed, prayed two rakats, and he made his tifat. So he, once again, those around him and students and those who were close to him, they asked him, you know, you didn't do anything, so why would you make that? And he said, don't you read what Allah said in Surah Nuh? And he read these verses. So now, these things are mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a return if you are going to be someone who makes a tifat, sending down the rain, giving you wealth, issue of children, the, the, the gardens and the rivers and then after these reminders after all the dawah that Nuh has given and these reminders of what will you will get in return when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repentance then the question comes in verse 13 so you see now it's very important when you make the book that you make the connection between what comes in the end, beginning of the surah and the end and you're going to see a lot of interesting things in, in this session the session we have coming inshallah as well, inshallah ta'ala. So here it comes, verse 13. مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارُ And what is the matter with you that you are not in awe of the majesty of Allah? Okay? The question is coming. What is wrong with you? What is your problem? After all of this that Allah gives you, after all that Allah has done for you, and then Allah is going to mention after this verse as well, other examples, and that's the connection here. Mentioning all of this, so one of the key to Debra, so the key, and, it, and, and one of the principles as I was speaking to you earlier, always when you reflect on the Quran, when you see Allah talking about the greatness of His creation, there is usually a message there. Within that, the or the ayat, Allah brings a message, or He shows us the hikmah, the wisdom behind why he's mentioning the greatness of his creation. Because the greatness of the creation, it shows us the greatness of the creator. The greatness of the creation, the greatness of the creator, meaning his right to be worshipped as one without joining any partners with him. Meaning his right to be obeyed and to not be disobeyed. So these are the objective of these ayat. And I was asking myself a, a question earlier as I was reflecting on, the, on these ayat. Because usually when I do my Tadebu sessions, and I actually have one later here, after Isha, inshallah. And that's what we've been doing. Our, our sessions here with the brothers have all been to Debra Shah sessions, alhamdulillah. That's one of the main things I try to focus on is you know re reflecting and contemplating on the on the Quran. So the the question I asked myself 
is this something in all of the places in the Quran or not? Because most mm -hmm. of the, the examples I thought in my mind, yes, there's always a message. There's always wisdom in there. It's not just mentioning the creation. But even if we were to say just he just mentioned something about his creation, that again, it, it goes back to the original objective is the greatness of the creator for him to be obeyed and to be worshipped as one and what have you. So here, what does this mean? Yeah, they, we can you know take it as the translation as we see you know what is the matter with you you're not in awe of the majesty uh, the, the, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you not to attribute the, 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 the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to the grandeur so this is and he, it's correct but if you reflect deeply on it and I went back to the the, the tafsir of Imam Ibn Uqayn talking about this ayah and I found it something absolutely amazing he said that you know from a'zam al-dhulm with jahil from the greatest forms of oppression and ignorance is that you want others to look at you in and, 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 and a good way and have respect for you, but you don't do the same when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, he gives the ta'aleen, why is this? He said, because you wouldn't want the people to see you in a way that's not befitting. Hmm. Obviously, if someone sees you in a way that's not fitting, they're not going to any show a form of, of respect or, 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 or greatness to, towards you. So he said, but so when it comes to the people, he said, you wouldn't do that. But she said, you do it when, when you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you. You don't have the respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't have the greatness for him. Uh, and then he said that, you know, that this is what the, the, the meaning of this verse. And he brought the verse after that. And he said that in, in, a, in, a, in another place, and he said, because you're not treating Allah with that greatness in, 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 your, in your heart, therefore it doesn't show up in your actions. And he said, because if it shows up in your actions, when you're, you know, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the respect of Allah, then you're going to obey him and you're going to be ashamed to, to, you know, to fall into those situations, as he said, and you're him alone ta'ala. So that's, that's very, very powerful. And then, you know, after that verse, verse 13, then it comes after that, and he, Allah is going to show us the greatness of his creation in detail. And he's going to focus on five different things. And, and, and that's one of the things that I've always learned when I look into the Quran, and, and I don't have my, my papers in here, but when I prepare, I actually go back. I like to do old school, you know, and I kind of like to go back. When I see there's a couple of them, I'll open up the pen, and I'll start to you know, write down what are the, the different ways, the different means, or you know, what is here. So I, I found there's five different things the Lord is focusing on from his creation here. The first Sorry, one is, you know, how he created us. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I want you to just like maybe take a pause here and just talk, spend a little bit more time on the concept of, you know, the awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and respecting Allah subhanahu yes. wa ta'ala and some of the practical ways that this manifests today. So some examples that I have seen, I'd like to see like what comes to your mind is uh, just the fact of like subhanAllah, like uh, just if you take the basics of how we deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to salah, right? Even delaying it or not praying it or being always late to it and what have you. Now comparing that to any other business meeting or sports meeting or social event that we have to be at and how we would take care of being there on time and being excited about it and not just dragging ourselves to it. And to the other extreme of sometimes like with the whole social media and edutainment and entertainment culture of being able to just make fun of everything. Even if it comes to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like things like, you know, oh, you have an iPhone compared to an Android, astaghfirullah, right? Where, where it's a dua that you were making to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're just like throwing it around when it comes to just general conversation and what have you. So we want to see like what examples come to your mind where we may or may not be displaying that waqar for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, well, we, I was just reflecting on this the other day with some uh, some brothers uh, and my family as well. And that is, you know, you, you'll feel it, like when it comes to the Salat, you know, I, I like to call the Salat the call of duty you know, mm -hmm. because this is the reality you're being called. Mm -hmm. salah, hey falah. So just like a soldier, when his, when, 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 when his you know, superior calls him, he has to be front line and, and ready as a soldier. So that's how we should be as Muslims. And you might find sometimes that, you know, especially when you're, when you know what you're supposed to be doing as a Muslim and you're a practicing Muslim, uh, you'll find that, for example, we wouldn't be lazy going to the masjid if, you know, our brothers are with us. So if you come visit me or I'm with you guys in Toronto, yeah, I'm, I, I'd be ashamed like not to go to the masjid, right? Right. Whereas if I'm by myself, you know, the, where's the all of Allah subhanahu wa No one can see me except Allah, for example, right? Right. No one right. knows if I'm at my house or not going to the masjid. 
So that, that's, that's one aspect that we fall into, as you mentioned. Um, but you wouldn't do that when it comes to the affairs of the dunya, right? Uh, even when it comes to, you know, falling in, in, into haram, for example, you know, I think one of the, the, the key things or one of the main things people are falling into these days, uh, looking at haram, you know, pornography and, and other forms of, of haram, that even just general movies that, you know, people, it's not something you would do openly, okay? So if that's something you would do openly, then, you know, if you have that respect of, of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and one of the, 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 you know, the greatest things of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that falls into the heart of the believer is that he's the sami al-basir, he's the all-hearing, the all-knowing. Everything we're doing, it's being written down. So we have that greatness. That's why Ibn al-Qaim, he mentioned that once that's in that heart, that all that greatness of his majesty, that's, that has to show up in, in your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not disobeying him. So and it, I think that's, that's, and, and that's what one of the main objective of these verses is. Allah, and if, if you look how it, where this verse falls, it falls after the, you know, as to make this tighfar, look, this is what Allah is going to give you in return. Then at the question asking, why don't you have that in your heart? When this is all what Allah gives to you when you when you when you need. And even sometimes when we're not obedient, Allah gives us these things. But yet, so why are we not, you know, we don't have that all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his greatness, of his majesty in our hearts. And then to put even more emphasis on it, the verse is going to come after that, showing the greatness of his creation as well, to come back to this principle as well, and another principle which is going to come after that. Beautiful. Jazakumullah khairan. Yes. So, so yes, let's let's talk about the creation. I think that's also one of the very important things because right now today we admire everyone and everything, whether it be the big corporations of the new design from Apple on their phones and MacBooks and what have you to the athletes who are performing like whether it be your the soccer in your backyard, right? With the whole performance that we saw. But when it comes to the amazing, amazing design and creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be direct and all the indirect ones like Apple and all the other things are indirect creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the performance from athletes is also an indirect one from Allah because he is the one who's giving those capabilities and that human ability to get to that space. But I think we just become very desensitized and ignorant to, yeah, these just exist where we just take it for granted. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that whole aspect of the creation that you were talking about. Yeah, exactly. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he mentions, I said, from his creations, he mentions, you know, five main things. And he focuses on how he created us uh, in verse 14, that he created us atwara in stages. Uh, and then, Wallahu in verse 17, that Allah caused you to grow from the earth like a plant. And there's an objective, there's a, a clear message what is sent from this from verse 17, something to reflect on. And then Allah mentions, obviously, uh, how the, you know, the sky was created in... Uh, uh, and seven layers it talks about the the the, the qamar the moon and the shams the sun and the benefits which come from them and then the ard how he made it inhabitable for us by making it be salfa widespread to an expanse and also with any the subul how the the roads so we can travel through it so all of this is coming and it's to remind us of allah's greatness something here and this i would recommend to the brothers and sisters and something actually that benefited me a lot reflecting on these verses is that when you because the key to tadabbur obviously is to understand first of all and he, even if you don't have the arabic language if you understand the verses in english it's going to open up some doors for tadabbur and obviously mm -hmm. you have to be careful that you have the incorrect meaning then you're not going to be able to do the proper tadabbur so alhamdulillah from the blessings that we have we have the tafsir of imam al-sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala translated into english printed by dar salam 10 volumes it's a must-have that all Muslims should have, not just PDF on your iPad, also you should have the hard copy at home as well. So Imam al he mentioned something in, the, in verse 14, very amazing. He said that the reason why the sky is being mentioned uh, is because that it's something, the greatness of the sky, that we know it's, it's something so massive and we're nothing compared to the sky. So if you look at the, how amazing the sky is and you look at ourselves, and that shows us the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah mentioned. That's the wisdom to get us to start reflecting and contemplating. And all through the Quran, Allah calls us to contemplate and reflect on his creation. And then after verse 16, he mentions something very important as well, Imam Sa'di. And that is uh, when Allah mentions, وَجَعَلَ الْقَمَرَ فِيهِنَّ نُورًا وَجَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ سِرَاجًا And Allah placed the moon there with a reflected light and the sun with a radiant lamp. Okay, 
So he said here that Allah highlights the greatness of his creation of these things. Okay, that's clear. So that's like the, if you want to reflect on it from a Tadabur standpoint, that's like the entry level Tadabur, understanding the why Allah mentions this, okay? And the many benefits that come from the sun and the moon, okay? So now I'm going a bit deeper, right? Uh, and that they, you know, show that Allah's mercy and his great kindness. So now I'm going even deeper, right? And then he said, and this all takes us to what? That the Almighty, the Almighty, the most merciful, deserves to be awed, loved, and worshipped, uh, and to be focused on that through fear and hope in your worship. SubhanAllah. So this, this is what, mentioning this, is the objective of mentioning these things is that it's bringing us to So this is the hikmah. This is the, this is the wisdom that Allah wants us to reflect on, to have that awe of Him, to bring us back to reflect, to worship Him. Another message in these ayat, in these verses, comes in verse 18. Because in, in, in verse 17, what did we say was in, in, in verse 17, if you, if you were to go back and to reflect on it, verse 17 was what? Wallahu anbatakum min al ardi nabata. Allah caused you to grow from the earth like what? Like a, a plant, nabata. So here, Allah mentions the hikmah right after it. But sometimes, any if you're not reflecting, even though it's clear, you might not reflect on, on, on that meaning. Mm -hmm. And then Allah will return you to the earth. So you were created from the earth. And just as the plant is nothing, and you go back to the to the verse in verse 14, 14 when Allah said, At so this so Tadabur, we're not in a hurry. As we understand. <laughs> we're reflecting. We're, 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 going, we're going back and forth, right? Okay? So atwara stages. The plant stages, seed, just like the human, right? And then it grows a bit. Now you're learning how to walk. Then it grows a bit more. Then it grows even more. So we're getting now in stages, right? So this is the plant. Then the plant, what happens to it? Eventually it dies. It goes back to the earth. So the human, the same thing. It goes back into, he goes back into the earth, into his grave. Thumma, Allah said what? Well, uh, then Allah said after that, ikhraja, And then he will, you know, extract you an extraction from the earth so you were created from the earth originally then you go back to it and then you come back so this is the the reminder here is the issue of resurrection okay and that's and, and, and a, a direct connection between allah gave you this obey him worship him uh know the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the greatness of his creation that's going to cause you to obey him to worship him as one and to be prepared for what's coming in the afterlife which is going to be the resurrection where you're to come to stand in front of him to be held accountable for your deeds. So this is the main if, if the things that we take, the main lessons that we take from this, se this section uh, of the surah. Now, so just two other things that kind of uh, uh, came to my mind as you were speaking about it. Uh, one is uh, the atwar, right? The, the tibaqa and atwar. So I think, and even as you mentioned, like if obviously if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, it could have been an instantaneous thing. And, you know, you put the seed and then tomorrow you have fruit. But I think there's this notion of learning about the long game and being patient and consistent and so, so on and so forth, which is obviously one of the things that in today's society with the whole, you know, one click and two day shipping and what have you, this notion of instant gratification, I think a lot of us are missing out on that we are not putting in the work and being consistent with it and we want results tomorrow or results yesterday. So I think that's another thing that's a reminder for us to be consistent in whatever we're trying to strive for. And then also connecting that, that yes, all these beautiful things exist, the, the shams, the sun and the qamar and all the beautiful things and the fruits and the vegetation and what have you, but also a reminder that look, at the end of the day, we are returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being accountable for how we used uh, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has individually given us and what we did with that. Exactly. So with this, inshallah, we'll wrap up and we'll see and we'll be with the Sheikh in the next episode as well. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.